camera on going. Okay. Uh, welcome to the planning board meeting for Monday, September 28th, 2015. As you can see, we're short a bunch of members today, so we'll be asking everyone whether or not uh, they want to proceed tonight or not. Uh, we have just a quorum, so certain things we can and can't do tonight. Thank you, HCAM, for taping the, uh, the uh, meeting tonight. Uh, the agenda, we have uh, three or four major or minor items, really. Uh, we have a 42 uh, Main Street project. Uh, it's an amendment to the site plan. Uh, Hayden Woods, uh, Davenport uh, Village. Uh, there's a proposed amendment for the flexible community development special permit and the design. Uh, there's some roadway changes uh, for Legacy Farms Road North. And we have a continued public hearing uh, for the uh, library project. Uh, we've also got a couple other smaller projects and, and discussion items to go forward with today. So, with that, uh, Greg, uh, do you want to come forward? And yeah. you got five of us, which is all we need to, yeah, to do the copies. Kind of the copies. So, uh, I guess it's not a, a formal public hearing, it's just an amendment. So, there's nothing for me to open tonight, but. Uh, why don't I suggest you start with uh, a little explanation of what you, why you're here, and uh, then we'll open it up to questions. Yep. I think you all have the package, but it's pretty simple. We went from a two-story with a basement down to a one-story. Site plan, everything else stayed the same. Uh, so there's no changes other than it is now a, around 6,245-square-foot new building going there versus the original 14,000 or so. So design pretty much stayed the same, lighting, you name it, no changes other than that. Impervious surface all stayed the same, so that doesn't require us to review parking lots or anything else. So, um, let me ask, start with asking a couple of questions. Uh, what really caused the downside, just to some of our kind of... Um, is it, uh, well, a couple things. I think that it probably was too big for the spot. That's number one. I think also that there's uh, uh, kind of doing some, my own market research, the, the uh, office market is already abundant here. We don't need more office market in downtown, we need more retail. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, looking at the, how big the project got as far as the value of it versus downtown hopping, and it was gonna basically be a little bit over budget. So uh, all in all, I think that now it, it sits and fits well within the confines of the property. Okay. And the fact that I owned, did not own 3036 at the time, yep. and I have to make room for them as well. Yep. So. And, and what's, how's the rental market coming? Just, I'm just curious. It's right? all booked up. You got it all booked? It's all booked up. Congratulations. <clears throat> yeah. So, so four that, apartments. <laughs> what? It's only four apartments up top, so they booked out in the Oh first no, one. no, I'm talking about Oh the new no. Oh, as far as the new one, uh, don't have don't have any for certain. We're talking to you know restaurants, still having problems getting restaurants downtown for whatever reason. Um, have a couple of folks in town that want to move to a more prime location. Uh, but you know, after this we'll be you know breaking ground in the next week or so and then we'll put the efforts in there because it'll still be six to eight months in terms of the build. Okay, so you are Proceeding. I am proceeding. Great. Other questions from board members? Other questions? Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, will you be building in a way that would allow expansion in the future if, uh, if there is a need to expand uh, going up? Going up? Um, you know, the art yeah. general and I, they're always good at <laughs> saying, do you want to spend more money to maybe someday do it? Uh, but they've assured me that putting on a second floor, if we wanted to do it, we could do it. It's, it's, once again, it's that whole cost-benefit analysis and looking at parking and, and uh, you know, trying to take care of, you know, from a business standpoint, just because you're able to do it doesn't mean it's necessarily good business practice. So after we got the, uh, you know, we purchased uh, 3036 and, you know, folks wanted to have two cars and things like that, well, we had to accommodate them. So that's kind of, you know, could we do it? Yes. Thank you. So parking is obviously a big issue. As, as we talked mm -hmm. about in the original hearing, too. Okay, so those are all my questions. Other questions from board members? Any comments, mm -hmm. questions from the public? 
Dennis, <coughs> uh, again, parking is the issue. We're already having problems with the pre present um, occupancies of the uh, yogurt place and the pizza parlor. They're already using our parking the drugs parking lot. They're choosing the pri they're taking the prime locations. I've spoken to uh, both of the uh, the renters. <coughs> Uh, presently, I don't know how many parking spots there are presently paid and usable, but there are, there's no business going on in the downtown as I came up. And there were nine cars in the parking spots. Um, and you know, it, when I, when we put up signs to say, you know, this parking is for hopping to drive only, we just create bad will uh, in, the, in the community. And, and I don't want to be put in that position. And I, I really think that the, the parking really needs to be rethought significantly. I have the same problem downstairs uh, in the lower parking lot with the Cumberland Farms, or what they call themselves now, uh, Subway, whatever, whatever they call themselves. We have those, um, tre the, uh, the lawn mowing people parking, taking up a whole string of uh, spots because they can turn around. We can pull in uh, on one side and pull, pull in the other side. So I'm getting it from both ends. And uh, it's just going to create, I'm being put into a position where I'm, where I'm being, I'm creating bad will because of other people's not having adequate parking and convenient parking. And uh, I'd like the board to address this if they could, please. One of the things I'd suggest that you do is talk tomorrow with the zoning advisory committee they're having a public forum at seven where they're addressing zoning bylaws where his project before he reduced the second floor met the, the letter of the zoning bylaw which mm -hmm. is what we have to go on now whether the bylaw that requires only 50 percent parking is a good bylaw at this point going forward, but that committee is where that would start. But that's not going to solve the problem as it exists now. Right. The, the town, and I think we agreed with you the last time you were here, the town needs to create some more downtown parking, which would help him out and certainly but, it would solve all the other problems too. It's also convenience. That's, that's, that's the other part of it because uh, the way his buildings are going to be situated, uh, the entrances are going to be such that uh, people are going to be encouraged to park uh, conveniently. And uh, get, from what I gather, there's going to be parking spots taken away from the uh, Main Street. So I believe that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that the sidewalks are going to be thinned and the road's going to be widened. So that means that there's going to be less on-street parking, which means that it's going to be more convenient, once again, to use the drugstore parking lot so if the entrances were perhaps located in the back, that would change the convenience factor because that would be the primary way that they would be getting in versus having it on Main Street. So I, even though I hear what you're saying that, you know, attending this other committee meeting might be very helpful, it's also convenience because pe people are going to do what's easiest, fastest, and most convenient. That's it. We can yeah. beat this horse. Yeah, it's, it's, it, you know, I guess the only response is that, you know, it's, we meet the bylaw and, you know, it was created a few years ago. Whether or not that is <coughs> what needs to be done, I personally would love to see another big parking lot downtown uh, because I think that's needed, and particularly if we go forward to 2019 when they do the road lighting. You know, you're going to lose a lot of spots, so. I will definitely attend the meeting tomorrow. Okay, that'd be great. Uh, if you would, my uh, turn yes. to one, one of the questions that I had was, um, so if, if you don't know what's going in that building yet, it's just a matter of you're going to, you're going to put in that building to um, work with the spaces that already have been um, allowed for your building. Is that correct? Uh -huh. And my request would be is if you folks would be so kind as to educate your um, tenants about where the parking, um, to, to let them 
let their customers know where their parking is um, in terms of just being a good neighbor so that, you know, you can let them know that for this business, the parking is for on street and to post that. Yeah, um, well, I believe it's a bad practice for us to post it as well. Sure. And, um, yeah, it doesn't yeah. Work. Yeah, and I and quite frankly, if somebody, I have a little bit different thought than you two do in terms of your property. I actually encourage other people to park in our lot, and we do have around 50 right now. So you have maybe 25 percent more, not much more. So the upper lot or the below lot? Yeah, our upper lot. So the point is that I actually want people to come park in there because it will enhance the businesses there. Doesn't matter, by the way, if they walk over to Hopkinton Drug. Uh, I'm just a landlord, by the way. I want my businesses in there to succeed, pay rent, and be viable in downtown. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, my wife's business is in the back. People park in the back. They don't park at Hopkin and Drug. They park in the back. So I don't see it as a problem. Uh, I, I, I will encourage people to park in our space because they'll be patrons, they'll be customers of our downtown community. So it's just a difference of opinion. The, the opinion difference that we have is that we have to listen to our customers saying, why, uh, we're, we're all the people. Why, why do I have to park in the lower lot or park someplace else uh, when they come into the store? We're all the people. And, and basically they say, well, they're all over at the yogurt store. And, it's, and, I'm, and, it, and it, to be honest with you, I'm very happy that your yogurt store, uh, that your, your, your tenants are doing just well. it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's exciting. I'm happy for you. I'm just a little disappointed that part of it is going to be at the dissatisfaction of my clients because that's why we purchased the property to have convenience for our clients. And some of that convenience is going away. In a small downtown, it will. Well, well, if, if, if I may suggest, um, or at least observe, um, it could be a win-win here mm. with your tenant businesses and, and your customers. There's a lot of overlap. Absolutely. Uh, perhaps have a uh, Buy a uh, buy two gift cards or whatever, and get you know half off on a yogurt. Or <laughs> I think people already do that though. I mean, people go into Hopkins and Drug and they come over and get a yogurt. People go get a yogurt and go into Hopkins and Drug. I, I think that's true. I mean, the issue is the pharmacy customers more than the gift store customers. I mean, the people that are coming into the pharmacy are often sick. They're often have. Um, mobility issues um, and we could we could put more handicap parking I, I thought of that um, you know if people were conscientious about coming in and parking in the spots that are for, further down which um, you know we've thought of doing different kinds of signage so they will park if, in the spots that are available at the other end of the parking lot um, but it doesn't work it doesn't work that way it's so, tough consumers we're going to go kind of what they want to do and where they want to go. Yeah. And um, I mean, unfortunately, you know, our downtown is, has always been handicapped by parking. Um, uh, but as I said, from my standpoint, I have no problem if people come and park in, in, in the, the lots that we've supplied and walk over to Hopkins and Drug and then go get a yogurt. For me, I look at that as the vitality of the downtown. It's increasing, which everyone needs. Yeah, and again, I agree with you if it wasn't yeah. for the pharmacy customers, well, it's an issue. So I, I don't know how to do it other than saying that I'm open for both ways, and yet I can't force my tenants to put, and, they, and I've asked them, and they said, we're not doing it. We're not going to put something that tells our customers what to do. They're going to do what they want to do. So it really is up to, it'll be up to you to post signs or tow people or whatever. Well, we, we, have, we have posted signs, and you know, uh, I don't want to have to come before the, the planning board to ask to be able to put up a uh, gated, basically a gated uh, parking situation, because that's not going to say, that's not going to win for you, and that's probably not going to win for me. But, but if it becomes, you know, if it becomes pushy, that, yeah. that may have to happen. And uh, at what expense and how inconvenient. Uh, so that's why we're here trying to find a better way on record to work together rather than, you know, well, we don't really care what, we don't really care. It's there and our customers, are, and our clients are just going to do whatever they choose to do and tough for you. It's kind of. Yeah, I guess I'm not saying it just so everyone knows it's customers are customers. We don't own them. I mean, you know, and I only own the property. Mm -hmm. You know, our customers are the people that live in the town. They they know where to park, not park. They know um, 
I, we don't own them. We can't control them. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Not, not that I don't care. We just can't do anything about it. Okay. Uh, let's. Uh, well, we, we can build synchronicities. Yeah. And yeah. We can try. Yeah. This this change we forced today actually makes it a little bit better, given that it takes away second floor and and associated people that would be going to that particular area. Uh, entertain a motion to determine the site plan conditions contained in section. Uh, uh, 210-136.1 continue to be met with the changes in the plan. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And then we have entertain a motion to approve the site plan amendment, uh, which lowers it to one floor, keeps everything else the same. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Greg, and good luck in your yeah, construction. Thank you. Okay. Next up is Hayden Woods, Dan Port Village. And we have two things coming before us. You do? One is the application for let's start with the flexible community development bylaw <coughs> and you're proposing to change what we approved i guess to the previous owner really <coughs> right, i think it was approved through the through bill when he was right. last in here um so i think the application that we submitted i think he had agreed to 10 at the time uh paying the doing the payment in low over over 10 units and we were looking to do it over uh, 15. That was the request. Right. No, he was he the providing <laughs> a portable <laughs> unit? He was providing a unit, and so your request is to make the payment in lieu of the unit. Right. Yes. Right. So basically, oh, he, he, he left it open somehow, I guess because it No, was, he was going to provide the He was going to provide the unit. Mm -hmm. So, that's what the so, so basically we're looking to, to do two things. One is to take it from a unit to a payment. Mm -hmm. And then the other discussion that I think we need per Elaine's memo, uh, I think you're, re what you, you're recommending uh, occupancy permits as opposed to... As opposed to after sale. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> because we can retract we those that. as opposed to the sale is only if we catch it in the registry. Come. So is there further discussion or anyone care one way or another getting the unit versus the payment? Yeah. Yes. I have a question, Mr. Chair. Sure. So if we do payment in lieu of the unit, does that then kind of kick the can down the road to the next developer that we need to hit a certain number of units themselves? Because there was one unit that was allocated for this development. Does that unit then fall to the next? No. So each each unit go? is each development is responsible for providing their own. So it's one for every ten. So regardless of, of what else is in the pipeline, it's one for every ten. Right. So, so but no. But I think Fran is saying t so that when we get to the census at, at 2020 or 2030, yes, we will have cash in the bank. But not a unit, correct? And that is that's that's, 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 my the, question. that's the issue, and that's that's a significant issue. Uh, we had when we came up with the Muse number of 280. Yeah. We figured we were going to lose a few like this. This uh, Mr. <laughs> Perkins, when he owned it, he was the only one so far that had provided a, a unit versus p the payment. Most people go f well. You know, do you put an affordable house in the middle of sure. 750 to two million dollar houses? Uh, that right. that probably doesn't work so well. Uh, but yes, the town probably at 2029 might be short of a unit or two, and might have to develop some more housing authority units or something like that. But this would allow them to have some money to go. Or they could, you know, if the <coughs> place or something comes up in town that they can rehab, that's something that the fund can is be that used what the for. Funds used for? I guess that yes, question to is buy, to buy or renovate units. Do we have a? Is how much money is in the fund? Right now, it's about one hundred and fifty thousand. This would add another two hundred and three. Two or three on top of that. So 
so there are some payments we're expecting as well from other developers who are doing the payment and we'll grow. Do we need, I guess the question is, do we need money in that fund? If you want to build units, you need, you need money. <laughs> yeah. well, I, what if we don't build units? <laughs> well, I mean, it's intended for that purpose. Yeah. Um, you can't use it for anything else. It's, it's intended, the bylaw was intended, and I'm not sure it works really well, and I suggested last year that Zach take another look at, at it, because, you know, we're, we're, we're running short, and, and we, we want to keep our 10%, so that's, that's how do you... Well, how the board do you, can say no to the payment. It's really at the discretion of the board. We could say no to the payment, but I'm not so sure that that... Well, I'm speaking for myself, I'm, uh, I'm not so sure that that's the best solution either. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the point of discussion. Right? <coughs> that's, so, that's the discussion. Do we want to do that, or um, I think there's pros and cons on both sides of it. I just would hate to get to the situation where you start, you've got a lot of these where I'll put the money in and pay for that, and it keeps their, that facade uh, uniform, you know, to you can, uh, Mr. Chairman, to your point of, you know, you've got all these expensive homes, and then you've got one affordable housing unit at the end of it, a little bit of a wart on the end of uh, uh, of, of your nose, so to speak, to some degree. But then at the end of the day, that they're going to do the census and say, Optin, you need X number of affordable housing units. And if you haven't hit the mark, if you've got money, we can build them. Maybe that's the option, right? So we just mm -hmm. say, hey, we'll build it. Mm -hmm. One of the things, and we'll talk about a little bit later more, was in the, the housing section that yeah. for the master plan, it, it touches really <coughs> on that. Uh, a lot of these, if you have them owner occupied, it's easier for them to slip through the crack if, if they're sold, mm -hmm. and then they can't find a buyer. So, you know, then then we get another payment, <coughs> the delta. But at the end of the day, we don't create units. I mean, the, the best is like the Muse or, or the the apartments at, at uh, Legacy where you Legacy. really you, you keep them all designated and, and there's only 25 percent are actually in the list you, I mean that's the best numbers and, and the be easiest to administer to do it. Yeah. so or, or the housing authority which is the same you know I mean that's publicly owned housing yeah. so this kind of creates the housing authority or could or could partner other ways with it is there a preference of the town to have the unit or the, or the money? It's up to the board. It's at the discretion of the board. The intent of the bylaw was to create units, well, either through the fund or through development. The developer. If we create units, would it be uh, something in the future that where we have properties <coughs> that we already have housing on that we could build second floors or um, on a property that we already own? Or is this something we need more information on? Because I, I don't think I have enough information to move on this um, tonight as it is, um, but maybe you can fill me in. So I guess my question is this, um, the Housing Authority in Hopkinton, would they be looking for f more property to buy to build houses on, or would they be looking to expand <coughs> what we already own and improve the stock, if you will? I don't know that they have a plan either way, but I think if the town was, from my perspective, if the town wanted to create affordable units, it, could be, it would be on some town-owned land. And so the land cost is low and you can provide more affordable units. And so we wherever that is, the housing land. authority... Well, Fruit Street, part of it is designated as affordable well, housing. So well. that is, the housing authority could manage it. It doesn't have to be where they currently are. It could be well, you just said a lot of feedback about Fruit Street was so far away for, especially for elderly or something people like to live downtown we're trying to make a vibrant downtown and, yeah. and Th putting an affordable unit in this doesn't make that any better either it's not from no, the, the, long, the long term the long-term vision though is to either have so many percentage or or build and if we're talking about accepting this then we're talking about building um i need more information and then if we're talking about I mean, the other is side of it is... Is this a special permit that needs six votes? Yes. So, if they were to provide the unit, you've already... The units are already approved, the design and so forth. They just go ahead and <coughs> one of the units would be affordable. I originally thought, and this is maybe a side note, but I thought one of the houses that was be the gatehouse idea, and I don't know if that got lost along the way or if um, the idea might have predated 
it, it wasn't involved with the final approval of, of, of the project, and we bought the the project more or less approved. So whatever Bill had, you know, essentially what was what we ended up. It was designated as Unit 18. Right. It was one towards, yeah, it was like towards the, the front, I guess. On the right-hand right side. On the right-hand yeah. side is the way he had them numbered. It was in the front right corner. So there was one right near the detention pond. <laughs> right. I think it was that. I think yeah, it was yeah, that. Yeah. That would be accurate. The one with the fishing from the back there. There you go. It's a bonus. Well, it's a big pond. <laughs> the, we're going to need six votes. How are you feeling, Frank? I don't think I have enough information. Um, what additional information could I provide? I guess, um, and I wish I thought of this earlier, um, I don't mean to hold things up, but we got feedback from Parks and Rec on the solar farm idea. Um, if we have some people from the Housing Authority maybe get weigh in on what they see as a need, do what do we need more? Do we need more housing or do we need money to build housing? Um, well, at, at this point, we know what the numbers are as soon as the building <coughs> permit were taken out for the muse. We will hit over 10, we're at 14 percent. We will be over 10 percent at the time of the 2026. For affordable housing, right. For affordable. Right. So, so we are talking about potentially 2029 is this potentially right. being an issue for the town. And you have 150,000 in the bank now, and this would put an additional 203 in there. Over 15 years, or no, over, over, over 15 sales, or f however we end up. Occupancy. And there's another maybe 300,000 in the pipeline. Yeah, I mean, there will be some more money put into this this account from other projects. I mean, we don't. I mean, at 14 percent, we don't necessarily need affordable housing now, as mandated by the state. Mr. <coughs> Chairman, my position is uh, generally I prefer that you guys have the unit on site, but given the fact that we don't need the unit for another 12, 13 years, um, why not put that money in, 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 the, in the kitty? Um, that way you've got additional funds. <coughs> you know, you're not forced well, sure, sure. Um, we're not in a position where we're forced to, to do anything to, to meet the need because we're already above the threshold. Mm -hmm. we just move on. It's a point of clarification. Does Unit 18 still being built, or you just yeah? So, so it will be built. We're, it's going to be mm -hmm. built. So we built whether or not it's affordable. Or mm -hmm. And that's the part. I'm, I'm just. I, I just. I don't. I don't. I don't feel comfortable voting either way. So I don't mean. To, if there are other people here, it would be less of an issue. So I don't mean to be <laughs> hanging things up. Well, uh, so I guess I'd entertain from you, Frank, a motion to table this request. How official who, do we do we invite other boards to comment or do we just seek out more information on our own? On well, this is really our our issue. I mean, right, Mr. Chairman, just a thought. You, you have so little money in your kitty right now. You may want to consider, especially when you've got the luxury of looking ahead to 2021, <coughs> to actually for a few projects consider taking the cash to build up enough critical mass. So if you get to a point, for instance, where you have a million dollars to say in that account, you could actually have enough cash with the proper financing to actually build something of credible size, you know, to create enough critical mass. With hundred thousand dollars, you really can't do anything. So until you get enough cash, that that money is sort of sitting there wasted. So you might want to consider taking cash for a period of time to create enough cash to actually do something realistic. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad point because if you can get the land at a fairly low cost because it's town land, You'd be very then you're in a place where you can actually to your point where so you, can, you know you can take the million dollars, partner with a you know like we did with the Muse or, or yeah. Legacy, you can put some infrastructure in, you know you build the road. I mean well, you know you can get there. You can make a big number. And and yeah. and at 2027 or so, we're going to know how many units we need. It's not going to be a big number. I don't. Be, I don't predict it to no, be a if big you number. You got a million bucks plus low cost land. You could actually put in make a put in a dozen or two make dozen units, and, and, and it's a and it's a good yeah. project. That, right. And you're still over ten percent for another 
another 10 yeah. years. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's the four units at a time projects that, you know, the nickel and dimes. They, they, they keep, you know, they add to it. Yeah. Or 19 adds one. You know, it's. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I agree. I like that. I like the train of thought. But there. but I mean, Zach could Zach could yeah. look at it as a cost on every unit too. You know, I'll say a affordable housing tax type of thing too, which sure. then might make it just more expensive to live in Hopkinton. <laughs> but it's but at least it would be. We'd keep our closer to our ten percent. Yeah. But I'm well. Maybe it's just because it's two thousand. 29. I'm not terribly worried about it. <laughs> okay. But Frank, it's up to you. Because otherwise, we want to move on. No pressure. Am I the only one that needs more information, or I think everyone else? I'm looking. I think everyone. I can else. make a, Although I'm in favor of a unit having a single unit that's not close to downtown. I, in that case, I'd rather have build up the funds to be able to build something with as more of an infrastructure. Uh, one of the things I did uh, is ask the lane to population shift and our town is getting older. The, the 55 and over population in 2000, 2013 <coughs> is projected to go up by 50%. So I think having an isolated unit not close to downtown doesn't really serve the purpose. I'd rather get funds together and we can do something downtown and service the people who need it better. That, that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking. So uh, I guess I'd be in support of this. OK. Uh, I think we're ready for a vote. And the vote is to uh, approve the change to the payment in lieu of a unit with the following conditions. The, the conditions are on page two of Elaine's memo. Have you guys seen those at all? <coughs> um, Basically, let me run through it. Contribute to the Hopkinton Affordable Housing Trust Fund in lieu of constructing or providing affordable housing unit on or off site. Fees are calculated by the guidelines below, and the timing of the payments will be the following schedule. Um, calculated amount divided by 15. Payment will be made prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for the first 15 units in the development. So I'm looking for a motion to uh, approve the change in a little bit with, the, with those conditions. <coughs> second. second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Six votes. So that's the first issue. The second issue was changing the connection. So I don't know how clear it shows up there. So <coughs> yeah. we probably should have brought a larger poster of what it was. But yeah, so I guess it's the uh, oh my God, the point is I can't see it. But yeah. in between the units, we had a couple of connectors. It only occurs a handful of times in the development. Might I just did a little quick sketch? Sketch <laughs> small out. Um, but the issue that we realized that some of the buyers were coming to us with was this was going to be an enclosed area. So if you wanted to go into your backyard or get something done around the back, you would have to walk around potentially several buildings to get all the way around. Most people here would have had to walk all around. Right, you would have wa had, had to walk around several buildings. So now these are just more like kind of pass through they're, open they're, areas. They're duplexes connected with a connector, right. basically. And going up to the site now and you see well, a lot of the structures, <coughs> if you put the connectors, you're going to have 400 plus feet of so one building. continuous building mm -hmm. where this yeah. breaks it. Right. And that, there's no uh, doors or anything. It's just a kind of walk through this the backyard. Yeah. Yeah. I like it, right? It creates, it creates a little bit more openness there. Yeah. It kind yeah. of separates the, the units out. Yeah. Uh, the, our bylaw requires multifamily units. Yeah, attached. Attached units. Mm -hmm. uh, is a minimum of how many? What I'm trying so to remember. Up to 10% of the units could be detached. Okay, and the rest single have family. to be attached, so duplexes or, or more. But so this is a an attachment. The building inspector is okay with this. And the attachment requires foundation and Which roof structure. Which track was the roof structure? Okay. Right. 
Okay. When I was out there today, I don't remember seeing There's the nothing con there yet. The concrete because is we, we were waiting to find out. Figure out what yeah. you're going to do. Yeah. So you will put some kind of concrete. The full foundations filled, Got capped. It. I'm going to have some kind of stone on top. Okay. Uh, did design review look at this? No. No. But this is relatively minor. Any board members have comments, questions? Personally, I think it makes a lot of sense for the very reason of inconveniencing those folks that are, you know, in, in the middle there having to, you know, skirt all the way around. Uh, additionally, I think it does, in your rendering, it, it, looks, uh, it looks a little better, a little more open and not as dense. Okay. And if I remember, the first four or seven are like kind of all there on the one side, and then... On the left side, it's on yeah. the left side is where right. the issue is really the most apparent. And then there's just one connector on the right side. On the right side, right. and the rest are duplexes. Yeah, right, and one standalone. And one standalone, yeah. it's, which gets you to 19, I think, correct? 18. 18. 18. 18. We can make it 19. Oh, I see. <laughs> you want to give us that all I see. I, I, see. <laughs> I see, that's right. This one has the extra one on the end. Okay. So I hear I hear your sales are going very nicely. Yeah, we have a Our number of reservations in purchase and sales. Oh, that's yes. a good start. Yeah. Good start. Good 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 Look for a motion to uh, oh, change the site plan for the open connectors. So moved. Second. Is, it, is that motion significant or sufficient? Yeah, just to approve the change. Approve the change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you very much. And may I just add, what's better than cash? More cash. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, thank, you. Yeah. thank you very much. Okay. Okay, next, I think, Roy, you're up. Thank you very much. Uh, we're here to discuss with you a minor change we'd like to make. We've already been through CONCOM, and I think they saw the wisdom in it. Um, I, I think you may have all received these plans, but the approved plan, which I should back up. So this, this is in the site, if you're coming in from Franklin, it's probably two-thirds of the way through the site. If you drive in, it's maybe a quarter of a mile before you get to Wilson Street. There's an area where there's a pond on one side. I don't think any of you have driven through. And there's a culvert that goes from where the pond is across the road with two fairly substantial um, wing walls uh, on each side of the culvert. Further up the road, there were originally proposed two retail. Is it in yet? It is. Okay. Um, further up the road, not too far away, were proposed two additional retaining walls. Not very high, actually. They were about three and a half to four feet tall for a fairly significant distance. And the general feeling was, number one, because of the grades that are actually in the field and the lack of wetlands where one might thought there were wetlands, and the fact of this sort of linear tunnel vision effect with two long walls and two more long walls. Uh, we, th we thought it would look aesthetically much more appealing. And I think the Conservation Commission did also, where we would leave the walls where the culvert is. We've asked to eliminate the two walls that are further up and do a grassed and landscaped uh, vegetated edge, sort of a two to one slope, which actually you can see here. The green areas are the green areas are the two to one slope, and the gray areas are a small segment of stone riprap. And what that would do is, as you're driving through, you would feel more connected to the vegetation on either side, and as you went further along, you would see the pond, and then eventually go across the bridge where the culvert is with those retaining walls. So the request is to eliminate these two walls do the vegetated shoulders and this uh, small amount of riprap slope. How high above the road is the... Say again? Uh, how high above the grade is the road? Um, it varies anywhere from three to four feet. So it's, it's about this high. It's not too high. 
And I think we got a recommendation from Beta that said they were comfortable with it and there was really no increase to the wetland resource areas. Correct. Or maybe it's a, a couple of square feet less. Is this part of the walk on Saturday? I was going to say, There's a walk through here on Saturday. Was this part of it? Yes. Sorry, I missed it. Okay. Any comments, questions? Motion to approve the plan uh, for the subdivision road construction. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, before you go, we're going to talk about uh, Rafferty Road interchange next meeting. I don't have a date to yet. Whenever a date is going to Okay. I, I, mean, I was hoping we would, but I, I'm so hoping we will too. Okay. <coughs> well, we gotta, I'll, get, I'll get in touch with them tomorrow. Okay, great. Because we got to set the agenda because that's mm -hmm. a short right. fuse. Uh, so we'd like to hope, like to try to do that next week. I spoke to Phil last week, and he said he was working on it. So I'm hoping he will have it for the next meeting. Okay. Uh, we could also need to go to the. Um, uh, the we met with a tree ward now on the site because I'm sure if you have walked it, equipment, you'll see there are numerous trees that need to come down to get the sidewalk in. Is Rafferty Road a scenic road? Yes. Sir. Yeah. I don't think Rafferty is. It's just Wilson. You think? Mm -hmm. You think so? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm not aware of that. I thought Rafferty well, Road's already marked with the trees. <laughs> I'm sorry, was that? Nobody's really done anything. Oh, I didn't know there was. Well, regardless, they're going to advertise that in the next couple of weeks, of next week or so. I guess it needs to be advertised for two weeks. And I think they're going to be, we've, we've categorized all the trees as about 105 or 10 trees need to be taken down between the full length of Rafferty and the widening of Cedar. In the right-of-way or just in general? Um, I would say the majority of it's probably in the right-of-way. Some of it's on the easement we have with um, Eversource. So we have a hearing jointly with the three working on that? Yeah, we already mm -hmm. did. Okay, so we will be taking that up. And Elaine, you talked to Ever source today about a poll that uh, this kind of this is kind of uh, John Kohler's email similar subject. I'm sorry, which poll? The poll in the middle of Franklin. That's oh, we had a meeting with them out there in the field today. And I met with Ever source and with the Verizon. Are you getting any help? Uh, they actually got so far as to put two stakes in the ground. As to where the new one goes. Yeah. yeah. Two, now they want two poles. They said that because they, the distances between two poles is 170 feet and the other two poles is 100, excuse me, 200 feet. So now instead of having that, they want to have two new poles rather than one new pole to split the distances up. Okay. So I asked them how quickly they can get on it because we want to get that road paved. I mean, John Westling is making it very clear from East Main Street to Franklin Road where it goes up the hill. Mm -hmm. We want to get that paved as soon as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. Problem is that pole's right in the middle of the street. So I've expressed that to them in very strong terms. They said now they're going to go back to engineering now that they've got their stakes in the ground and hopefully get back to us soon. Okay. Good luck. We'll be seeing you soon, I'm sure. <laughs> on, it is on this one or Rafferty Road. Well, we also, we also have a work order going for one pole on Cedar Street where we're doing the widening on Route 85. That seems to be moving along because they actually came out and painted the pole, which is a good thing. <coughs> Painting the pole does. Well, they, they, put, the they, they put the word Verizon on it. means that they actually went out and saw it. So they. So we have a work order number for that one. Okay. That's going to go back four feet. Okay. Yeah. Poles are the most frustrating thing I think this board ever has to even remotely deal with. But anyway, good luck. We'll we'll see you soon. We, we stay on top of them all the time. Yeah. Okay. To the point where I think they're tired of hearing from us. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thanks, Appreciate yeah. it. By the, by the same, we, 
the lane also goes triggered because the pole at um, Paul's project on Lumber Street, he's mm -hmm. having a hard time getting their attention. Oh, so really? we were yeah. assisting on that, I think. So let's see. Where are we? We are almost back on schedule. We are ready for, I guess, the library at this point. If, if they're ready, are you, Dan? Are you ready for us? Or are you yeah, we're ready. Okay. Before we get started, we're down a few members today. Okay. We got six. Uh, it's always your option whether, you know, it's, it's the way I see it, Dan. We're probably not going to complete today because the parking issue still, while well, making a lot of progress, isn't there. But we can make, we could get through, I'll say, the rest of all the detailed discussion. I'm hoping uh, to get through that to, at least today. And then finish it up with a short meeting the next time. Really? That's that's okay. where I'm seeing it. If, if Claire misses a meeting, can she vote next time? She can watch the video. So both she and okay. Brian can watch, and Fran can watch the August meeting. And I did. Oh, okay. So. Just can't tell what okay. <laughs> So anyway, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I'd like to just keep plowing through it. And okay. Get this thing done. So would we. Okay. Uh, so basically, I'm reopening the continued public hearing for the site plan review and special permit for off-site uh, parking for the uh, library at uh, 13 Main and 9 Church Street. As we last left it, we were halfway through the detailed discussion items. Uh, I've heard from Elaine and I've heard from a couple other people that the town is making progress on a shared parking agreement with the uh, St. John's Church. Yes, that's true. And that would probably make that issue go away, provided that things are uh, written in a, in a reasonable way. And from what I understand, Ray is off writing a draft. Or I think maybe it's written I, I think the draft has already been written. Okay. And, uh, it's the church had a couple of comments, and that's being reviewed now. Okay. But how how far does does the plan want would want a signed document or a letter of intent? But that's what we yeah. we usually have something in writing indicating that it's either done or nearly done. We can it, it, we can write it. Can I think we want to know the essence of the conditions. Mm -hmm for sure, and then what, what did we have on the cultural arts? We had a signed, we had a signed agreement for that one. Right. And I think the other ones we've had signed agreements, if I remember well, correctly. Written agreements. Written agreements. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but it sounds like that issue is well on its way of being resolved. I, 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 I'm presuming that that what is written is there, but I mean, it's. I think it meets most of the criteria that requires for for that. But, but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself because I haven't read anything yet. But I'm presuming that we gave it to you on time. I think, didn't we? <laughs> okay. So I think where we are is we received a revised set of plans since the last meeting which kind of incorporated everything up to date. And we've also received a letter from Beta that I think basically says everything is pretty well closed out on their issues. So I think if we plunge through the, uh, the detailed review, we'll make a lot of progress. And then we'll, the last one, we can just get to the final conditions. And this is assuming we have the parking. And and get ready to, to vote and approve. Okay. okay, so I think we left off. We had finished signing, s signage, landscaping. We had an action item, I think, for some trees into the plan. Was that how so we left? The plan, no. And the plan has the trees in it. 
I believe. I think everyone's here to review that. So I'm taking H off the outline. Mr. Chairman? Yes. yes. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Walker, Aiden Brown. Yep. So um, my question is on the south side of the property, the proposal is to have uh, thorny, I believe it's thorny honey locust planted. And in the planting uh, design, I read that those trees are slated to be three to three and a half inches in diameter. There is no height listed. Nor would I know what the width of those trees would be either. You have somebody that can kind of educate yeah, us all on that? Yeah, just to, I'll just point out the, uh, the south side. Last time we were here, we had a plan that had four high locusts, and we increased it to six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, typically, unless it's a um, an evergreen, they're measured in caliper, so it's on the planting list uh, numbered, and they're three to three and a half caliper. Typically, they're six to eight feet um, planted at that, at that caliper. And um, this is... Basically, this is what a honey locust looks like there. So it's a broad-leafed tree, and which is different than the uh, the ones in the on the back, which are the evergreen, the emerald arborvitae. So honey locust gets to be about so many feet when it starts to mature yeah. more. I mean, yeah, these are obviously much taller than. Well, these these are mature height. You're looking at. Right. You know, a number of years down the road before it gets up to, you right. know, 15, so, 20 feet tall. Mr. Chairman, what I've read about the honey locust is, A, they're a tree that's sometimes considered a weed. They they don't get their foliage, foliage till very late in the spring. Uh, they have a tendency in windstorms, uh, once they do get more mature, the branches break off. So I would I would request that the plan be reconsidered to look at a different type of species of tree. Unfortunately, we're missing Claire, who seems to be our tree expert here. Any other options? Yeah, yeah, the high locust was picked specifically because of the root system and in, in the location of it. Um, you, you can put maples in it, you can put oaks in it. Um, they're appropriate for parking areas. Um, so, you know, as a landscape architect, that's what was recommended. Is it a project where my landscape architect's going to get all upset if you change the trees? No, it's really up to the client. And going back and forth, we, our recommendation, this was an appropriate planting for this location. And I think I'd have to go. We're not experts on trees. Either. We hire we hire experts. We hire landscape architects, and this is what they're recommending. So um, I hate to just change it based on. I I, I think uh, of anything, it's a it's an action item to to maybe relook at 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 whether honey locust is what you recommend. Scott, do you remember what the tree is over at seventy seven? <laughs> Those Main Bradford Street, Paris. Bradford, Paris. Mm -hmm. Are they appropriate next to a parking lot? Because they do keep the leaves on fairly long, and they're, they're not bad. Yeah, yeah, it could. I mean, they're not as broad in there. Yeah, I mean, the honey locust, locust is a yeah. pretty prevalent shade type tree, planted tree in both suburban and urban areas. Um, it's pretty hardy and uh, what, why don't why don't we take take it this way? Elaine, can you contact our tree warden and ask for his opinion on a honey locust? And if he's not too keen on it, then get with Dan and say, hey, come up with another an alternate. Okay. I mean if I could just ask if is a, is there a specific species that you have seen that you would like like a something you could recommend that rather than I, going back and forth yeah later? unfortunately I'm not a, okay but 
tree expert either. I, I only did my reading on it. The other concern I have is, you know, if they're only, I'm sorry, Dan, what did you say, the height, nine, nine feet? Uh, the initial planting heights? Yes. Probably something around there. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was hoping for some better screening. I mean, if it's nine feet, the canopy in the tree is not going to be very wide. And I was hoping for at least some initial better screening. Okay. I think that's going to be an issue regardless of what species we select. We can, we can only plant a, a certain yeah. size yeah. tree. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not yeah. looking to be difficult either. I mean, no, I'm, no. I understand. You know, I'm here. I'm available. You know, if you know you want to have a call with the landscape architect again, you know. Okay. Okay. Let's, any so, other issues? No, I'm on that, I'm at, sir. While we're on the screen, I'm Jeff Hadley for Hayden Row. I'm also a fan of our, um, First of all, the additional arborvitaes are greatly appreciated um, on the east side of the addition. Mm -hmm. um, I was just going to request in the plan, the new plan it says are 7 to 8 feet and I think once they're planted they'll be, that will be kind of right at the top of the fence and I'm worried that if, if they're not a little taller they won't get any sun and they might not thrive as well so if they could go to 8 to 10 feet or something that would provide us a little better screening plus maybe give them a better chance to survive getting a little more light so just a request. I ask, also ask the tree warden of concerns about shading on those just to figure out where it is. I mean, those those things will grow like a weed, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I, my neighbor's got some yeah, that are higher in their house. Yeah, they go pretty quickly. Yeah, um, and feed a year, I think, oh, if I remember right. Yeah, and the, the concern that our landscape architect brought up was that the, the bigger we plant them initially, the less chance it's going to survive. Oh, higher really? mortality rate okay. with the bigger trees. So I would have thought the opposite. So it's yeah. good to know. Yeah. And you want to, you don't want to go in and try to bring equipment in to bring a replacement tree in either, because that's pretty tight back there. In fact, I think it's kind of almost boxed out of a corner. Yeah. It's tight back there. You, you, you want these to to last. Right. right. I mean, so it's good. So the the fence is six foot. These are. Specified to be seven to eight, so they're a couple right of feet a above foot, a foot or two a year after sure. that. Uh, but I putting putting them in larger than that is problematic. Since you were already calling up the tree warden, just to ask his opinion. Okay. Just a clarification: is the seven to eight feet above the ground, or F above above, above the, the ground, ground, above the root yeah. ball? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. So that would give it above. Yeah. The feet. yeah. No, those are a substantial size. I, They're yeah. larger than we typically uh, for yeah. is it for yeah. large. Yeah. Okay, are we done with landscaping neighbor buffers and existing trees off the outline? Looks like we are. Okay, the next was stormwater management. And Elaine, there was only one item that was confusing on the bait. Beta one. I'm not sure whether it was stormwater. I think it was. Oh. Most of these all say issue result, which is in the last memo, which I congratulate you on because we're not going to spend a lot of time. I think it's on page eight. The top one, SW18. Yeah, I think I can clarify whether the soil data was provided. Maybe just this wasn't updated. Oh yeah, no, it was all provided. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it just they didn't update this. Yeah. That, that's that's what I was seeing when when I looked at his yeah his other was, piece. Basically, was actually all ret, um, worked out before the last meeting, and then we just gave all the information afterwards. So, so basically, from from I'm looking at it. Unless there are other questions on stormwater, I think we've met all the requirements of our consulting engineer. The board members have any questions? Public have any questions on stormwater? All set. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, go ahead. How? I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to look at the memo and 
how, how is the water being handled? Is it is there recharging yes. occurring? Yes. And is that recharging located where on the property? Yeah, in the parking it's, lot. Yeah, it's, it's in the middle of the parking lot. It's, it's underneath the parking lot. Yep. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. And then the overflow, if I remember, and then I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, goes into the storm sewer. Correct. The there's a, there's an overflow that goes into the Church Street underground system. Okay, good. Memory's getting a little short these mm -hmm. days. Okay, uh, stormwater's closed out. Utilities. I'm trying to remember. Obviously, they're all available. Yeah, wa water's coming off of um, um, Main Street, Church Street uh, at the at the intersection uh, is where this gravity sewer line is going to go into. Um, all the uh, overhead wires are not part of this project. They're all going underground to a transformer and into the building. So, so basically, yes. everything is going to go underground. underground. Yeah, and, and um, services on the street are adequate. And the transformer, as much as you can, we've got a, a screening plan for that. Yeah, that was one of the changes. Um, it was actually completely enclosed in this. Here's a dumpster. Okay. A recycling and a transformer. Okay, so it's all in. All enclosed. All enclosed. That's an interesting concept, that's right. but I think I like that potential concept because we always mm -hmm. have the problem with the with the mm -hmm. with the screening utility boxes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and this is the first time I think we've seen it that way. Mm -hmm. As long as the door opens wide enough for NSTAR or ever source. Well, you uh, take the dumpster mm -hmm. out, and then you got plenty of room. Well, that's true. That's I mean, true. Yeah. yes, sir. Uh, Mike Rowan, yeah. uh, six eight and row. Um, how do you get to the back area if you've got a structure that has a dumpster and a transformer right there? The that grayish area going up and down is a sidewalk, so you'd be able to go across through the sidewalk and then take a left on. So that's the only access back mm -hmm. there. Correct. You can't get any equipment other than a, a lawnmower back there. Correct. You're you're looking at. That's what, 15 feet, something? I forget what the back set back. 50, yeah, I think it was 15 feet. 15 from, the, from the property the line, mm -hmm. and, and you're going to have a bunch of like bushes. So, yeah, you're going to do it with that, uh, these, these type of logs. Yeah, there's, there's no reason to bring a ride mower or anything right. back there. And I'm sorry to, yeah. but I know you, you closed out the um, stormwater, but all of the water is going to run off that roof going to run into that back area. Is there a catch basin back there? Yeah, there's a catch basin. Uh, the, all the roofs collected by a uh, closed piping system and brought this way. There's a uh, catch basin in this area and anything that's coming, what's happening now is the water's coming down. Any of this area that's going to be collected is going to go through a catch basin. It's got a four foot sump and a hood and brings everything down in this direction and then our infiltration system's over here. So no, nothing's going in that direction at all. Roof drains are all all internal, yeah. underground. underground. Do you board members or public have anything more on utilities? Next one, and I'm trying to remember what the zoning compliance on the lot. Oh, Mr. Rowan had some. Okay. The questions on zoning compliance were? Like the setbacks and basically it. Is it well, I, I guess fundamentally, my question is, uh, is are you reviewing one lot or two, two lots? We're reviewing this as, as a, a combined lot. We, 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 we will require a condition that it will be combined. That will be a statement of condition? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the purpose for a combined lot is to um, well, you got a building that goes across the property line. Right? To make it a corner lot. And Whether it makes it a corner lot or not, when you put a building across the property line, you usually combine the lot. Yep. And they could, they could do that any time. They could bring that plan in at, at our next meeting, and then they wouldn't get the condition. But I mean, it's it, and it's 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 called an approval not required. Okay. An ANR plan, and we don't have any other ANR plans on our agenda tonight, but we've had some of the last couple of meetings, yep. and 
if we didn't approve it, the town clerk has to approve it after, I think, 15 days. 21. 21 days. So there, were, there was some question whether we actually needed planning board signatures for that because we're combining lots, mm -hmm. not subdividing. Right. So they could go into the registry with what's right. called the 81X plan. Right. Okay. I guess just from a legal basis, if you're taking two lots and you're combining them, but you're in combining them, you're you're relieving the requirement of a rear yard setback. That's that puts me in a green person status, from from what I've been told. So um, I don't know if there's any other condition in which you've combined two lots in the town of Hopkinton or Cornell lot, but there are conditions in other towns that have done that that, that have been uh, um, adversely impacted the abutters. 77 West Main most recently. What? 77 West Main most recently that was combined with one lumber. Yes. Yeah. We, we, we did that at this point uh, in the last six months. I, you know, as the whether it's aggrieved or what it is, I, you know, I don't have the, or I don't think anyone on this board has the zoning lawyer experience. Uh, I mean, some days we play one on Monday nights on local TV, but uh, you know, it, that's that's something else. But Elaine, I believe there's some other decisions where the town is found on corner lots. Well, if if it's an you know, the building inspector determines what's a corner lot and so forth. And so they've determined that for corner lots, going by the zoning bylaw, that it's two fronts and two sides. And that's that's how it's interpreted. Whether, you know, a lot is a corner lot depends on if it's, a street is there. So, you know, we've had lots of instances where people constructed buildings on sites and they combined lots. For instance, 42 Main is going to be a combination of three lots. Um, together on both Walcott and Main Street. Um, it's just the way the land the land is, the sites that people have. And you really don't want a building that's going across the property line. You can't meet the setbacks. If you're going across the property line, you have to go to the Board of Appeals for a variance from the setback requirements. So it's very common for the lots to be created. And plus the parking will be on a separate lot if it's not combined as well. So the building as proposed, the lot does meet the setback requirements for a corner lot. Okay. I think that's consistent with where we've been operating. Like you said, it's an appealable offense once we write a decision, if, if that's, you so take it that way. Or is well, it you're, not, you're not making a plan, but it's not making a decision on whether it's a corner lot or not. We're, we're just doing a site plan review at this point. No, you are absolutely making it based on it being a corner lot. We're approving it, saying it's in, you, in you, zoning compliance based on what the state truck that. did. I mean, because that's what the back is, I think. All right, you need to state that in your the board, one of the board's your decision. Fine, right, you'll determine whether it meets the site plan standards, which is the zoning requirements have been met. Yeah. No, okay. So. Right. Well, I strongly ask that you state that it's a corner lot, that you're basing it on the combined lots being a corner lot. Okay. Next one is very, uh, any other comments on this zoning compliance? <coughs> Next one. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Oh, go ahead. I have a question. Yep. Um, I did review the bylaws and, and try to understand what the term structure and how it's defined in the bylaws. And I, I really couldn't get a clear definition. Structure meaning? The transformer. Transformer. The Typically, if it doesn't need a building permit, it's not a structure. But that being said, the zoning enforcement officer, the building inspector, determines whether it meets the building code, whether it requires a structure, or not, whether it's a structure or not under the building code. But to build a fence, you normally don't need a building right. permit. So, so I guess my question is, is more in regards um, to the parking lot and the parking lot area, where you're now building stormwater recharge. Uh, the parking lot is there to support 
or protect that recharge. So would that be considered a structure at that point? Parking lots are not structures. If the parking lot wasn't there, the parking lot wasn't paved. The recharge would work just as fine, maybe even but better. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to then drive cars on the recharge, is that? You can drive cars on the recharge. So there, I, there was no clear definition in the bylaws that I saw that parking lots were excluded as a structure. Typically, we've seen driveways and parking go right up to the property line, or a lot of our bylaws for in commercial areas require a setback from that or a landscape feet. buffer. But other than that, landscape buffer, it's it's not part of the structure setback as practiced in Hawkins. Mm -hmm. Streets and parking lots are not structures under the building code. Other questions, comments? Yes, on zoning compliance, combining the lots, is your intention to, to do that sometime soon? Yes, yep. We just had an update from our uh, architect who contacted the surveyor, so that's coming shortly. Okay. So there's a question whether we're going to go straight to the bridge with 81X or we're going to come to you with a. Whichever is easiest. So. Yep. We'll write a condition that requires the lots to be combined, mm -hmm. I think, before issuance of a building permit, which we've done a couple times. Other questions, comments on combining lots? What's your schedule for construction? We are um, going out to bid in November with an award probably the end of January. And then construction would start really at that point depending on the weather. So first part of March time yeah. probably. Yeah. And maybe you know maybe we can demo the uh, nine church street building during the winter but sure construction in earnest probably wouldn't start until March. Yeah. Question to the chair. Go ahead. Is um Nine Church occupied now as an income property still, or is that? Time? No, it's it's vacant now. Um, I think this is a good project and everything, but one question I have is, we, before we expanded the library, we could barely afford to keep it open the hours we want to keep it open, and then now we're spending all this money expanding it, then our income to run the library is being demolished, and. Uh, it's going to cost us a lot more money to run this bigger building. So I thought we were thinking about solar panels on the roof and the way to keep uh, electrical costs down and things like that so the building would be more efficient to operate as, as uh, more affordable to operate. You know it's more of an outlay in money at the beginning to do the solar panels. Is, is that completely off the table now? or I believe so. I don't think... We, we, did we look at solar and it really wasn't applicable to this particular building? We looked at it. We don't have yeah. a lot of roof yeah. surface. Um, you don't mind me answering. Okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, we, we looked at solar. We don't have a lot of roof surface that could, su that could support the, um, a system. So we were looking at a system that was reasonably small. Uh, also, we don't have a lot of slope roofing that's facing in the right direction that we could utilize because of the way the building is designed. Um, we, we did think about it a little bit more during the study phase when we had a larger building, uh, when we when we went through this more recent design process where we pulled the building down in scale, um, we, we have a lot of usable space that's actually up underneath the slope portion of the roofing, and we don't have a lot of room up there um, anymore because of that. And so really the only system we could do would be up on the high portion of the roof uh, and they would all have to be cantilevered up at at least 30 degrees, and so they'd all stick up. The historic district commission wasn't all that happy about that either, and it and it kind of chops into the sky. It's not real nice looking, um, and because the system was so small, uh, it didn't. It wasn't really it wasn't really doing a lot. We were looking at a system that that may, in sunny weather, do less than five percent of your of your electricity. And so we are still pursuing lead certification for the building. The building is going to be um, 
green and sustainable, but that's just not one of the strategies that we're pursuing as part of that. And not to belabor the point, but Scott Richardson is behind you. He's one of our leading green guys, right? Is a uh, does that match your perception? Uh, not yes. As, uh, uh, in review uh, during the design phase, uh, again as the footprint got smaller and just the configuration of the roof system didn't really seem to work to support the solar uh, panel installation. However, we are going with the geothermal uh, heating and cooling system, which will definitely be more affordable to operate uh, for, the, for the library. I know we're on good hands with you guys. I just needed to ask, so thank you. Okay. Uh, going on further on construction conditions, it looks like you're going to be building through a marathon season. So, Elaine, maybe you want to prepare a condition that we talk about, you no know, roadway impacts, was it one or two weeks before the marathon? Or just two, two, two weeks before? Yeah, I think we already have that worked into our construction bid documents. Uh, okay. That, that, that window, that, is it no, no work or limited work or? I think the intent was to come up with language that would suit the town's needs. Okay. Relative to restrictions, whether we, we, it's we it. line restrictions or we property it. line resist, you know, we just need to get that defined so it's displayed in the documents correctly. Obviously, that Monday, no, yeah, no work, no Monday. work on that Monday. Cause, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but typically, we have a requirement that nothing in the street gets disturbed two weeks before, so that if there was a pothole problem. Right. We the town DPW would have time to, to emergency fix it. So that I think the essence of our typical condition where we are on the route yep. or okay. close enough. Okay. Uh, other construction issues. I mean, we have some typical. You know, thou shalt not bury crap on the lawn. You know, you, Dan, you've seen our <laughs> yeah. typical ones. Yep. Uh, you used to impose them, I think, when you were on this board. Uh, though they haven't varied very much since. Okay. If, if there's any other, no other questions on construction and schedule, we'll close that one out as consensus. Dumpster hours and screening. I think Elaine already put a proposed condition for dumpster. No dumpsters should be emptied before 8 a.m. or after 5. That's what I think Sounds Elaine reasonable. is proposing. So during the day. Any other comments, questions on dumpsters? Okay. Snow storage. I think Elaine has got a condition which we do fairly typical. If, if the amount exceeds what you can store on the site, you got to get rid of it, which is right. typically what DPW is doing <laughs> in, for most of that town anyway. And I think we're in that position here. We're going to be hauling off snow and on large on large snowstorms. There's no no way, two ways about it. Yeah. Other questions, comments on snow storage, and we will. Yes. Elaine already has a draft condition for that. Okay, we're getting closer. Handicapped access ramp. There was some last questions, I think, when we put this on as to whether or not the ramp, there was changes going on with the ramp up on our first set of meetings. And I think we have it's uh, we have it finalized. We have it finalized now. It's it's slightly different than what we showed historic district. So we're going to go back and show them the final plan. Okay. Um, we got a copy of, I think in our package this time, we got a copy of the historic district approval. And it wasn't 100% clear to me that it was that significantly different. It really isn't. I mean, from, from what they approved, I mean, they, they, they were doing a conceptual, I don't know. But going back to them, probably make Claire and others more happier than that. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the easiest. Path of least resistance. It might, it might be a half an hour meeting that makes it your life that much easier. I don't know. Because, I mean, here it didn't, 
you know, didn't show much in no. the way of detail. And, no. But. As long as we don't have handrails, that's the big. That was the big thing. And we got you got rid of the handrails, so that's right. No, no handrails. Okay. Other questions on handicapped access ramp? Okay. Bike rack. And we got a bike rack now somewhere on the property. Yeah, yeah. Same, same bike rack that we had before, but we oh. just moved the location. Okay. Right there. Right there. Anyone have questions, comments on bike rack? I want to thank Elaine again for her heads up on uh, t letting us know there's a grant available to get the bike racks. So uh, it's good to know that's still part of the library going forward. Okay. Seeing no other comments, questions, and bike racks. I think we're down to the last hours of operations and activities and changes to the hours in the library. No, we expect to remain the same because we are. Maintaining our operating on our side and our conservation side, so we are out there. Okay. Other than maybe some of the off hours in the, if the meeting room is used in the evening, might extend your hours a little and bit. That, yeah, and, and, and the library is closed off from that, so it can So that wouldn't be a library use, that would be a separate use. No, but it's, I mean, it's this, this complex. From our right. oper operations, right. uh, so would would we be expecting a condition on on hours of operation from on a site plan review? I don't think so for this type. Okay, of, all right. Of, I mean, I don't view it as a obnoxious use or anyone that it's an exi it's an existing it's use. Is well, what it is. Yeah. And yeah. and even with yeah. the the meeting room, I mean, you know, you're not going to have meetings at. 11 o'clock at night, I don't no. think, because no. nobody's going to come. <laughs> it's only the planning board that meets till 10. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Yes. I believe when we did talk about the lighting and, and the hours of lighting operation, right. that that this was one of the topics brought up where, where it was, I thought, agreed that lights would be off at 11. That's correct. We, we, we have a proposed condition. Site lighting shall be off one hour following the closing of the building to the public with the exception that no case shall in that in no case shall light site lighting be on after eleven PM. This condition shall not apply to lighting necessary for public safety and security and required by the building code, meaning you can still have your little porch light on, you know, as required. But basically the parking lot lights would come off at eleven at that condition. All right, so for the safety of the public, then I would think there would be some sort of restrictions on when even the meeting room could be used up until a certain time. I would think you would probably schedule it no later than like 10.30ish or yeah. quarter to 11 because you got to get empty the parking lot out by that by 11. Yeah, you know. To close the absolutely. building. Absolutely. Right. I just didn't want to have restrictions on the library if they wanted to change their hours on Saturday until three or four o'clock instead of two. If, in, if anything, it would be something time. like to 11 yeah. from right. 7 to 11 yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay. 7 in the morning to 11 or something. If, if I don't know. I don't know whether the board feels that we need a, a restriction on this. I don't really. Well, I'm not crazy so. about it. No? I'm sensing. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's. Yeah. The, the, the library's got to be, be the of. quietest use I ever. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> Is there an issue now? I mean, it won't really change. The hours are the same. When Stephen King comes, that's a different thing. But. Okay. If I kind of recap where it is, uh, we have parking is the only major issue out, and we're kind of hoping that you come back with an agreement soon? We are too. Um, so. 
and and then there's the action item on the trees. But mm -hmm. I think I think that's got everything that we've covered. I mean, that, I think you're down to just a couple little things. Yeah. Just to be clear on the parking, the the library use itself doesn't have an issue. We can meet the requirements of the bylaw for the library use. What is being asked of us is to consider the the meeting room and the library as main uses that's going to happen at the exact same time. Correct. And that's where we run into problems. That's where you run I, th I think that's correct. And that's I, I, don't, I don't remember the numbers exactly because, quite frankly, I didn't get prepared tonight to look at those again. Yeah. Just, but I think you're, in essence, right because you've actually got probably 20 more spots than you currently have with the library right. use itself, or not 20, but 15 net or something, whatever you've got in the, you know, the staff yeah. parking and handicap spot. So you're, you're, we're, and the library use of, by itself, in my opinion, you're better off than you are today. We are. Yeah. yeah. But I think, I think considering a, a meeting use and a library use as main uses is a very high standard to be held to. Well, except for, Dan, I, I honestly think that may, that, meeting room is going to be a, an asset to the community and people are going to use it. Yeah. I mean, and and yeah. meetings start before the library closes at night. Usually. Yeah, but they're what you what you're Yeah, okay. All right. And, well, and, we'll and, and and a guy yeah, is a, a guy is somebody going to get the, you know. I mean, if it's a meeting use for I don't know. It can be a library one, but you know it could be another town board or committee that ends up using it. Right, but if it's, if it's a library use, then you, then the library is probably going to be empty because people are going to go into the meeting room. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So. If it's children's hour, I'm still going to be on the other side. <laughs> we'll get the piece of paper. Yeah, we'll get the paper. Yeah. Okay. So, what's what? What is your thoughts of getting back? the shared parking agreement. Do we schedule you for next week to try to finish this up or, or the, our next meeting after that? Because um, I think Ray's off on vacation most of next week. Yeah, is Elaine, is Norman going all week this week? He's back Wednesday. So I'm going back on Wednesday? Okay. So you have a meeting next Monday? Yes. I think that's a little okay. soon. Could be if you're looking for a signed agreement. Um, yeah, the church, Lord knows how long they're going to take this. Get approval, but yeah. But actually, the we, priest we has a lot. We of couldn't it. accept that as a condition that the meeting space wouldn't be used for non-library events until a signed agreement is in. We, we, we could, we could, we could probably do something okay. like that. If, you, if the if, board had a draft, just uh, you know, a draft, draft agreement. Okay, all right. So that some evidence that there's a belief that there will be an agreement. All right. Yeah. Is it proper to ask since the town? On property in a town agreement, is it proper to ask what the agreement is like so far, or is, it, is there any obstacles, or is it, is it just moving forward and no one's had the time to complete it yet? I think that's what it is. I'm, I'm not even privy to the details that's been going on between the church and the town manager's office. So, you the Pope can get in town and fix that. I don't think it has to be approved by the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> But there might be some question as to whether it has to be approved by the archdiocese as opposed to it may, the local it may priest. Have to, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It, it may take some time. But if, so if we could come in with a draft or something and then accept the condition, then we could keep the library project moving forward. So with that, I think, I guess I'd like to come back next Monday if we could. Does that work for? I don't see any other issues, do we? How about it if we? How about if we kind of double book it? Because if it's, or figure out a way. Because if you don't have something, I don't want to look up, you know. I, I, I want if, you could, if you could pencil us in, and if we don't have it by Thursday when Norma gets back, then we'll cancel we'll, it. We'll push it back another week. Or whatever the It'll week be is. the 19th. 19th. So it's not, okay. you know, it's not that much further. All right. You know, I haven't seen any intractable reasons not to approve it, but I'm, I'm speaking as one member of the board. Okay. I mean, you're on the process, you know. 
So, Elaine, if we're doing it on the 5th, what time would you suggest? So if you want to double book at 7.30, we can double book with 34 Hayden Road. 34 Hayden Road is going to be at Donnybrook. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so you can take this up first and then have 34 Hayden Road after. Let me do it at 8.30. We're, we're not doing anything else on, on the 5th, are we? Master plans, yeah. yeah but that we mm -hmm. can fill That's in. It. Yeah. And then Will Rafferty, if we have that. Will Rafferty. We need to get Rafferty done. We'll double book Rafferty in this. Then we'll fight it out with Roy Hoovos first. Okay. 8.30. But we really want to see at least a good draft of the agreement. Okay. Look for a motion to, because we also don't want to go forward and lose another couple of members here. So we do need six to approve the special permit, and we're getting dangerous so close to six. Mm -hmm. uh, Will the video be available in time for Claire to look at it? it should yeah. be. Okay. The, uh, what else was I going to say? I guess I lost that train of thought. Oh, the other thing that for the board members, we asked Ray, because the parking is going not from what we quite advertised, because it was advertised from behind here, it's going to the church. Ray's opinion was that we don't have to re-advertise, and that's, that's great. So we're okay on that. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to continue the public hearing for the library, both of them, to the uh, October 5th at 8.30 p.m. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded for the discussion. Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. And there will be, we will be starting off on item 6, which is the getting the last plans and revisions if needed. Okay. So we got to solve trees by Thursday. Mm -hmm. Elaine. Uh, and then we'll go through conditions of approval. We have one more public comment period at the end, and then we'll probably be voting on it. If not, this one, whenever the shared parking is there. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Now we're back on schedule here, kind of. Okay, Maspinot Woods. Good, come on down. Okay. Davis, do you want to get voted on? No, I thought I'd stay all night. <laughs> yes, I would. Okay. Uh, Mavis has uh, agreed under, somebody must have twisted her arm to uh, go on the Zoning Advisory Committee again as a <laughs> member of a large. And uh, before we vote, thank you for volunteering. And uh, so anyway, look for a motion to uh, reappoint uh, Mavis O'Leary to as a member of large the Zoning Advisory Committee. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, uh, discussion? She a former planning board member, right? Conservation Zach. Commission? No, Zach. 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 She's been on Zach for yeah, two or three years. Uh, Maybe more than that. longer than that, I think. It's, it's, been, it's been a bunch. So. Uh, I know you have some history. So There's a meeting tomorrow night at 7. Thank you. Thanks. So get sworn in once we vote you. Uh, all those in favor of Mavis O'Leary? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. You're welcome, Thank you. Man. Thank you. Okay, while well, he's setting up here, no, go ahead. Why don't you go ahead? Hi, uh, Bruce Wheeler from Aspinock Woods. Um, we had uh, designed a, uh, a a new plan. It's very similar to the other plans, and it's submitted to the building inspector for a building permit. Um, he kicked it back to us and suggested that we. Um, speak to the planner and the planning board about it. Um, 
which uh, is what brings me uh, here this evening. Um, it's our E plan or our uh, Emily plan, and it has um, this. This was one of the boards from uh, from our previous meetings. Uh, the Emily plan has very similar uh, design and uh, massing to our A plan, but we, uh, some of our building envelopes really called for a little bit more narrow structure in the front, but could handle a little bit wider structure in the rear. So that's effectively um, how uh, the, the plan uh, uh, from a from a floor plan standpoint, was uh, uh, we, was revised and we gave it sort of a similar um, cape uh, with dormer structure, but uh, mixed up the door do the dormer types just to give some uh, additional diversity to uh, the development. So this this adds another. Set. It's a it's a it's a plan that um, that we're adding to our I guess portfolio of plans that were that were approved. We had um, an A, B, C, and D plan approved. The B plan um, we're we're actually not going to use. It was a a, a different version of the of the. Uh, of the A plan, but the the market sort of seems to prefer the A plan, so we, we um, th there doesn't seem to be uh, a need for it. It just was a um, uh, had had a little bit different um, uh, look to it. Um, so we're we're wanting to add this plan to the uh, uh, to uh, our plan types in the development. Elaine, did we show on the master plan which units go in each which which building can be of what type I think they're allowed to, to shift around you approve the three unit types and you know they only some of them only fit in certain locations okay uh, but but they can mix and match and they're encouraged to mix them up okay for a variety I just could could not remember any of the details on that mm -hmm. questions comments from the board Did design review look at these at all? They have not. They've not looked at these. It looks it's like it's got most of the same elements. It's not, and it's not a requirement. Design review is not required. Or it sends it there for advice, but it's not a required approval. Anyone have any problem with approving this, John? Just one question: How many <coughs> potentially are we looking at? Let me. Uh, so I have the site plan that we uh, all were looking at um, with our original uh, when we were in originally and then as we f uh, came up with this other design it, 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 we have the um, labeled uh, so we have a revised site plan too just to see how um, um, our, our thinking with unit type location has uh, has evolved um, in, my left, your right, is uh, what we had in front of you um, uh, originally, and upside down. So which one have we approved now? This is what's what we reviewed originally, which okay. is uh, what was approved. So um, what we found was that when we were uh, wrapping around the circle. I'm sorry, can you hold these the same yeah. way? Because that's really giving me distance. Yeah, totally <laughs> <sweet. laughs> One of them got flipped. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That I'm sorry. was going to go up on the side. Yeah, right. There we go. Yeah. I, I apologize. Right. That's okay. There we go. So, is it better if I'm a little bit farther back? Yeah, you're, you're okay. No, I see that. Put that down. That's horizontal. And then that one should be vertical because the. Uh, oh, oh, I see. I see. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that helps me. They're printed all sort of differently. <laughs> um, uh, so when we when we were going around the circle, the 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 footprints were um, t 
tighter in the front and wider in the back. So, um, and to accommodate uh, a large enough first floor um, for what the marketplace is looking for with the with the master bedrooms down, um, uh, we had developed the uh, the E plan. Okay, so so it looks like there's some Emily's down at the bottom and maybe one up at the top. We right now we have uh, one, two, three, four here, mm -hmm. five and six. So there's no difference in uh, square footage. It's um, a little smaller than the A plan, um, uh, but it's a little bigger than the C plan. It's based on the dormer space, or even on the square footage uh, footprint. Is what I meant to say. The total square, the foot, uh, both the footprint and the total square footage would be. Uh, between the the A would be the larger one, the E plan would be second, and the C would be third, the D smallest. So basically, you're asking us to one approve this revised plan and two unit. A, a revised Avery plan and a new Emily plan. I don't know. If you I, I don't know. I think this is more just presentation-wise. Okay. I don't know. I, I I I didn't think that we that this was necessary to be okay, approved. But it was just it was just more sharing information uh, uh, with the board as to um, you know what led to the thinking of the plan and how we were utilizing it. Just. This is the one we approved, that's, that's that's, right. but that's got A, B, and C all say A, B, C, and D. So, so, but but you think we we're allowed? I think you allowed them to to move around as necessary. Okay. And and what's the Avery plan changes? Something about a. Front porch to a study, or yes. Um, the Avery point. If we if we look at the front elevation, we'll see the on the right side that we have a study in this front position. On the left, we have a, a porch, mm -hmm. um, and it shows up a little bit better here the the overall size is quite similar um, uh, it's really just having the porch in this front position or a study and everyone that's come in is interested in the study so um, uh, we, we thought it made more sense just to uh, and we didn't know in, in design until we started talking to people really what was going to be of um, uh, of interest so uh, our expectation in uh, we were we were we were approved both. We I approved guess. both, but I think that that what we're finding is that there's um, a, a lot more interest in um, in in the A plan with the study versus the porch, um, and the building inspector had uh, said, you know, gee whiz, this both of these have studies um, and. Uh, uh, I think he was looking for. We've since gotten the uh, the building permit, but um, he initially was just uh, trying to sort out if that was okay. okay. Questions, comments. One other question for you. Sure. It's not related to these three changes. Okay. But you've got the old building that's off of Elm Street. It's not part of your That's circle. Right. Now that the lady is either gone or really gone, I'm not sure which. Uh, right here. Does that make sense to be part of the project in that configuration? Or should you be putting an A, B, or C unit down there? 
Well, I mean, that's we would prefer. Uh, it's simplex. Yeah. yeah. We, our preference would be to have um, uh, one of these style units. Uh, um, and I wasn't part of the permitting, but um, there, uh, I think with the Conservation Commission, they were limiting um, the development of the building to its existing footprint. Oh, okay. So there might be a reason why. Uh, you know, so I think it's more. It's relating to the buffer zone of the vernal pool in the buffer zone. Um, there, there's a there's a oh, here, there, here's a vernal pool here. So we have a buffer zone to the vernal pool, and then we have a buffer zone to um, the pond. To the pond, and I think that the house is in between the two buffer zones, and so there was resistance. Is is what my understanding was. To expanding the um, footprint of that of that home, um, we would. And, and I thought at one point the owner of the property wanted to continue to live there, which no longer. And right. That's that's not. That's you know, that's resolved itself. That issue. If if it wasn't a buffer zone, I'm asking the board members: Do we care? I mean, quite frankly, having a new single unit brand new construction I mean if I was buying into the condo project and I have to keep up upkeep on this right, that would be our strong preference we'll, we'll we'll take a look at um, I, I, what, I, what I'm getting is it's trying to have sense from this board we wouldn't care well one part right. of the problem was that the uh, the lot is pretty wet yeah otherwise so it, it doesn't drain that well. Uh, so it would need some engineering. From what I remember, it would need some engineering to be able to be buildable. Um, but uh, that's how I remember it. So it would be not as simple as just replacing on that foot footprint, but re-engineering some of the uh, wetlands. I'm not wetlands, but uh, stormwater management. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. I mean, uh, I'll talk to uh, uh, our engineer about it, who was the engineer during the development, and and find out historically what. Uh, their discussions were and um, just see if there's some alternative thoughts and uh, uh, share those with you. I mean, if I mean, we're not forcing their what you know, we're just well, our preference would be to do something um, uh, that's uh, maybe a sing a single of one of these unit types in that location would be would be our or maybe our something that's even a little scaled down to that sure. closer to that footprint or, right. or you know, something that would might work. I mean, I, to me, you just got, well, it's going to be kind of treated as different. But It'll if be you're unfinished a, if it's not. Well, if you're a condo guy, you know, you're paying dues based on a unit basis, sure. I think, and, you know, geez, I, you know, maybe, I don't know. What was the deal with the summer camp? Uh, this is the boathouse um, <laughs> that, uh, and, um, the, the existing permit allows for um, uh, uh, a new boathouse in this location, and the architect is working on uh, a small, a smaller version of that, um, something that is consistent with the, um, this sort of camp-style architecture. Um, that could house two canoes, uh, two paddle boards, um, and uh, two kayaks, um, w which which we would provide uh, for for the residents' use, um, but in in this location. So, uh, I would expect in the next 60 days um, we'll uh, be cycling that through for people to review and comment on. Okay. My next, my last question. You guys are going slower than anyone else I've seen. Is there a <laughs> reason? <laughs> well, we, we did... Uh, no, no, I take that back. You're, there's one other subdivision <laughs> that's actually going slower. But. Okay. Um, we're, we are getting ready to, um, to begin construction in, in earnest. And uh, we do have our first building permit with, um, uh, with the A building, and we're, we're hoping to start... Uh, uh, the the E building next, and uh, and then the C and D. Um, so starting 
uh, first first buildings to construct. Uh, we, we have a permit here, and then we're looking to begin uh, these three uh, buildings as well, um, one after the other, and then uh, uh, and, and then advance uh, this way through the development. Um, we do have a permit on C. Um, I think logistically it works a little bit better for us to start here with E, which we're, we're hoping to go from A to E, and then and then move in that direction. Okay. Just one more comment. I went driving through there. The catch basins out by Elm Street seemed like the highest point in the whole project. Um, Next time you're going through, I'll I, take a they're, look. they're not going to take any water. Okay. I, I mean, they, they're like six inches higher than every other part of the road around there. Uh, yeah. I'll take a look at that with uh, with the engineer. I mean, there's something something's not right. I okay. Mean, I don't think. Um, I haven't noticed it, but I'll I'll take a look at it. And, Particularly uh, the one that's that. literally right, like there. Okay. Yeah. And you know that one would be taking water from going out on the Elm Street in the hill. Right. Okay. What are we looking for? A motion to approve the changes for? To approve the, the Emily unit and the change to the Avery unit. I'll entertain such a motion. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And I think that's it. Okay. For today, Thank right? you for your time. I'll, nope. I'll report back on the other uh, I mean, items. So the other you. items, we're not pushing it. We're just no, trying to be uh, friendly. Uh, I'll, I'll look into both the catch basin and uh, um, the 30th. Uh, okay. Unit. Okay. Thank you. Yep. The. Uh, Next item is Hayden Place, McDermott Lane subdivision. We have not provided information, so we'll you want to hold that one, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see, the zoning advisory. Uh, let me finish with that. Master plans uh, update. In your packet, you've got. The housing one. I spend a couple of minutes, more than a couple of minutes, adding to it. And we'd love to have comments on it. And I also wanted to emphasize and kind of go through the housing goals on page 10. Our plan, as we've talked about it, and I believe John and Claire. We have, it's in the printed package. Yeah, we, we did a printed package. We're not going to talk about that tonight because because you're going to get to get it to read it so we can talk about it next week. And if anyone else has got another one, the meeting next Monday is fairly light. We'd love to finish up another package or two. And I want, you know, we want to go through all these one more time and then we'll get them all together and then we'll finalize the schedule. So anyone that's still working on one, please continue to work on it. And since I started the housing one, basically you can see all the, the changes I put on, but basically what I kind of emphasized that for the last seven, eight years or since the last master plan was adopted is we've really approved a lot of rental units and condo units and kind of what I'm saying is do we have enough you know the last master plan it was do we have enough diversity do we need rental do we need condos well with the 940 legacy farm you 700 condos at legacy farms you got this project, mm -hmm. the, the other guys that were in here, you know, we've done a lot of condo projects. Um, do we want to slow down in that particular area? Uh, we don't, we don't have to do garden apartments. We, the garden apartments were instituted in 81 
right when 40B came in place. And it was to be, you don't go for a comprehensive permit, we'll give you a garden apartment. It's got to be in, within these parameters, it's got to be two bedrooms, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, we'll live with that as opposed to getting a 40B, I'll say, uh, pushed. <laughs> Push is a better word than what I guess I was thinking. It was very successful with that too. A lot of them were safe enough. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, all, all the kind of projects basically that you see in town are, are under that project. Maybe there were some, there were some 40 Bs. And, oh, yeah, some were 40 Bs, but I mean, Walcott, was that before? That, that, that was, no, that was the first. Um, first under the garden apartment. So, so anyway. Uh, what I'm kind of saying is, uh, and, I, and I kind of thought this way after talking to a lot of people in town, you know, maybe it's time for us to take a breather on housing dwelling gross expansion. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to, trying to uh, say in this the whole area, kind of. And then basically for housing goals, I said uh, our goal is to maintain the character of Hopkinton much as it is today, wish to keep Hopkinton as a very desirable place to live and a particularly desirable place for families. Hopkinton is currently building out already permitted rental and major condominium projects that have allowed us to meet 40B requirements and diversify our housing options. For the near future, we propose to emphasize traditional single-family house developments and a lower rate of growth in dwellings while continuing to meet our Chapter 40B requirements. And in order to do that, these are the goals. I came up with 11 of them. I just wanted to go through that. Uh, first of all, Land Use Department keep track of all the affordable housing units and in, in the number of dwellings so that we can predict where we're going to be and this report will be provided annually to the town so that you know, nobody's going to be surprised coming up to a census that we are either short or not. And the Affordable Housing Committee to be reconvened or reappointed if our Chapter 40B 10% is in danger of being reduced below that reason at the next uh, census. Uh, Planning Board Review would eliminate flexible community development bylaw. That is the what we talked about, that's the, the, the unit or the payment. Mm -hmm. And I said review, or approve, or eliminate. I'm, I'm not sure it really works really well. Uh, mm -hmm. Zach had some questions last year, and then he decided not to do anything after looking at it for about one hour. Uh, maybe it could get improved, but I, I'm not 100% sure how. Uh, fourth one is uh, proposed changes to the garden apartment by law to say that they're only permitted if we don't meet our 40B 10%. So basically, that would take that whole section of the bylaw, and one of the findings the planning board would have to meet was that to approve one under that section that we're below our 10%. So it doesn't get rid of it, but it puts it in hibernation, I guess, until, until, it's, needed. until it's needed again, as opposed to, I, I thought that ended up being more clever than taking it all the way out. But I thought about that. Village housing. Village housing is uh, kind of a garden apartment, but it's every unit has to be affordable in it. We've built none under that area. They were thinking of if the Fruit Street property was to develop, it would kind of go under that bylaw, I believe. But basically, to kind of provide that and put a checks and balances on that is to require a host community agreement such as was done for Legacy or for the Muse, which would then, that would put, I'll say, some selectmen checks and balances on, on, on that particular area. And yet if the town wanted to use it for town affordable housing in 2029 or whenever we needed it, it would be available to, to be used. Yes, good question. Why uh, we would require um, host community unit for that and not the uh, garden apartment as well? Uh, does it make sense for both? Uh, that's that's a pretty good question. 
I, I'd, I'd, I'd feel free putting that in. I, I was kind of putting garden apartments on hibernation, but but requiring that in there is not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, Why not? yeah. Uh, and uh, study new bylaw for affordable rental housing with a house community agreement and only applicable if we're below our 10% goal. I mean, this would be maybe not a, a bylaw that you do right away, but it basically codify a muse mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. thing that if if we got into that procedure, you know, this is maybe not one that I would be looking at to do this year or any anytime soon, because we're not going to need it for a long time. And then uh, senior housing bylaw, basically, I think we all heard that age restricted housing can become non age restricted housing. You know, if if we can't figure out a way to tighten that up based on federal law, then maybe we get rid of it, mm -hmm. uh, or how host community grid. I don't know how to fix it, but right now I think it's broken. Uh, use uh, this is an overall goal. Use the, the CPA funds, and the CPA has also got I want to say over a half million dollars in their housing that they could also be used for for affordable housing and 10% of the CPA collected money so that grows by 100,000 plus a year from that 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 fund uh, but basically when we need to, to meet our, our requirements and I clarify whether assisted living and nursing home units don't have full kitchens we had that discussion Little, not so much this board, but Golden Pond has got full kitchens in some of their affordable. Is the census going to include them as mm. housing units? We had that discussion on the assisted living on East Main Street mm. for Legacy Farms, where they don't have kitchens. They're not supposed to be counted, but you know if they get counted by the federal government, then we're short 12 units. Uh, let's figure out a way to maybe strengthening wherever we talk about assisted living or nursing home uses. Uh, let's see. 10 is something of going back to uh, programs for, I'll say, first time home, you know, new families, maybe kids of residents, somehow figure out a way maybe to, to figure out and I don't know how to do it, but maybe the smart people on Zach could come up with something, or Lane or somebody. Um, Eleven is maintain a list of those properties that are subject to a demolition delay if they have historic or architectural significance. So basically, you buy an older house, you know kind of from day one whether you're, you're, you're going to get mm -hmm. resistance or not. Um, who would manage that? Would that be historic commission, probably? Yeah. Not us necessarily. Uh, develop formal policies regarding backlot zoning, dead end streets, and standards for private public streets. And we've kind of had a lot of those discussions over the last two or three meetings, particularly on the I'll say backlot zoning or dead end streets. And so th those are what I thought for the housing. If anyone has any more goals or something like that, I'd be we ought to consider them at all. Uh, if people f were feeling a little bit comfortable with some of these, I might present a couple of these to Zach tomorrow night at their hearing as something, particularly the ones with the garden apartment by law. Mm -hmm. We need to, if we're thinking about something, we want to just, I'll say, push it and go ahead and do it fairly quick because if, if not everyone that has one of these in their in their back mind will will accelerate the development of it yeah. you know if, if they see it sunsetting in the future so you know I think a couple of those that are in there I would propose to present to Zach I think that one with the garden apartment um, should also include the senior housing by line there too if it's going to be modified because they're nearly identical. Okay. 
if it's not going to be eliminated or modified in some other way, that should also have the same description. So okay, maybe 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 combine maybe, combi it, maybe put four seven. Because seven. Seven. if you do that to guard department, all of a sudden people will want to build the senior housing, and that isn't what they necessarily would want. Based on number seven. Right. Add 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 four conditions to number seven. I yeah, I was saying propose. You know, yes. What does the board want to talk about those two bylaws before you have Zach start working on them, so that they have more of a more of a focus because they could well I, I I just want to get them in their agenda and we can maybe talk about them a little bit more in the future yeah. and, and we could ask Zach to look at them November time period we're going to get a lot more busy because you know mm. Pulte and Legacy Farms Road North is going to come and I saw a plan set and it's about an inch thick uh, so it's, but other ideas? I can just comment. Yeah. I, I asked Elaine for kind of population changes. And it's interesting in the population is getting older and younger. The middle, the 20 to 55 is shrinking compared to the under 20. And the 55 and over is actually from 2000 to 2013 increasing by... Fifty percent. Wow. So, well, I guess what, what do we say? I'll say young kids out of college because of their school debt can't afford to buy a house in Hopkinton. Not here. I mean, yeah. I think that's what, and some of us are living long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but one of the comments that was made is and that I've heard is I think the general feeling in the town for a period of time was the smaller units and the apartments were good because it didn't increase perception school age population and we wouldn't have to expand the schools and what I'm kind of starting to hear is very nice but it's changing the character of the town and we have enough so I think what we're what you've commented in here is is a reflection of I think people's concept now is the mix is right and if we continue growing the multifamily the character of the town that attracted a lot of people into town is going to change mm -hmm. um, I mean a lot of discussion people have, you know I, I talk to people and go Upton's looking pretty good you know just down the road and doesn't seem to have the density of growth that we're looking at so I think it's in the right direction Okay. Will that change though when those units at Legacy are actually built? Those all those single family homes at all? The, mean the, mean the condos at Legacy? Well, not the condos, but the single family homes, right? So the, of the no. seven hundred that are slated to be well, there's only fifty that are originally approved, and then he's going to go for the change to put the senior housing in, I think, and then that fifty goes to the fifteen on the south side. So there isn't that many single family houses. Oh, yeah. You got all those simplexes that kind of look that way, yeah. except for they all look the same. Mm. I mean, mm. you know, one of the things I think on Legacy we're going to have to look at early on. Right now they kind of combined them in villages of about 20 units. Pod. Yeah. Pods. Yeah. Is, is the pod idea a good idea? I th maybe from a living standpoint it is. I'm not sure from a diversity looking it it makes some all look the point. same. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I think that might be one of the objections that people have. But, sure. But I'm pretty sure that Pulte is continuing pods on the north side. But I'm sure it's easy for them from a build standpoint? Economies of scale? <laughs> well, they would probably build the same amount at each time, but maybe every other, you know. Yeah. But their rationale was that <clears throat> each pod this pod has all master bedrooms on the first floor so that people of me that don't want to go up five stairs upstairs would, would go to there and then I'd have 20 people that are likely to be more my age than all younger same. kids yeah. and you know then the duplex people whatever attracts you to that housing you, yeah I mean that's an interesting intellectual discussion that I hope we have in the next couple of months yeah. for that project. But 
Uh, I, I'm sensing a, a fairly reasonable. Yeah. This this is okay. Yeah. yeah. For at least a draft and kind of ready enough to go off to a. We'll take Elaine's comments and kind of put it in and fix all the whatever other spelling stuff you found. So which which of those would you look to take the Zach one? Probably the ones for garden apartments and uh, and in the senior housing. I think those are the highest priority ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of these are not Zach kind of requirements either. I mean, these are just a plan to General. get for the next five years. Some of these are even longer term than that, but yeah. so everyone's ready for it. And maybe the flexible community development law. I mean, mm. I think Zach is, in, in the, and I guess the planning board have to decide, you know, is the amount of money that we get per unit worth, I'll say, tax, you're kind of in a way taxing mm. housing stock, and you're doing it substantially. I don't know whether that's. It's a philosophical question, I think. Yeah. yeah. Depends on your perspective, I guess. Well, mm -hmm. I am very happy that we finally got over our ten percent. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's a, a remarkable achievement for the town. Mm -hmm. I mean, no small. But to, I and, and quite frankly, before Legacy Farms, I didn't think there was a chance. chance, chance. Yeah, yeah, we just couldn't. You know, just couldn't get there. Yeah, the and and then when it kind of came through there and it, and the market conditions etc everyone kind of went there okay so any other ideas that for zoning advisory committee you know is there is there a minimum size lot requirement or does it depend on the zone where that's all covered, right? But oh, yeah. Every district has a minimum. Oh, well, speaking of zoning advisory committee, we're going to have a public forum in our October meeting. The, the project to rezone right near uh, the high school, the dental building, and the building to the south of that, which went before Zach. Mm -hmm. Uh, a citizen's petition has been submitted, and it's on the uh, been special town at the special town meeting in, on the 26th. So we're going to have a public hearing on, on the 19th. The, on the 19th. Okay. Can you explain it again? The, the two buildings. It's you, Hopkinton or some dental pediatric dental. Oh, or whatever. Yeah, yes. The and, and the one to the south yeah. of that, which is a, a an older house and a barn. Yes. It's in between that and the Irvine property across from Kenny's gas station. Yep. Yep. Uh, What's interesting about it is the two houses across the street, one's new and one's historic. So you've now put those two people in a situation where potentially with no restrictions they can, they're going to be looking at commercial property. It's, it's, it, Zach was kind of divided on it. I, I, it was a 50-50. They voted to kind of recommend it to us. Well, they voted to pass it along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The it was kick the can. So anyway, that one's going to be coming up. Drive by it, kind of get a feeling for it. Uh, I've heard that there's some development. There's interest for commercial stuff in that area. So I don't know. I haven't heard much more details than that other than I know a realtor was looking at like the the, uh, the Palmer Turf property and mm. you know and the one next to it would probably fit in that same category so I don't know. You don't propose that hire Wayne Davies as your lawyer for that if you don't have some plans coming kind of out for it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so I think Oh, uh, let's see. Other things that are coming up. Uh, the tennis club is good for on Lumber Street is coming up pretty quick. Uh, 
we'll probably be seeing that on what? The November 2nd. November 2nd. Oh. Uh, the Concom will be starting there soon. So that's, that's kind of new, and Legacy North, as I said earlier, is, you know, we're working with Roy to, to do some analysis to support the, that, that item. So, anyway, that's anything else that we need to talk really about? I think so. Yeah. So Elaine says she's the last one in town to hear about it, <laughs> which is not true. <laughs> well, I've also I've also heard rumors that uh, Finn Perry's property is is up for sale. I mean, oh, he's okay. found a buyer or somebody, but I don't know. I don't know. So that's that's all the rumors that I am aware of. Okay. I'll ask him next time I almost run over him. We'll see in the dark in front of my house. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yeah. I, and I don't know how far along they are, too. You know, I mean, it, it might be just early on, but, I, you know, he's been trying to market it for a while. So anyway. Okay. I think we've uh, spent our time. Look for a motion to adjourn. So, well, second. Moved and seconded. Thank you all for coming today. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain?